Creighton student athletes and Coach McDermott have left the locker room. They'll be here shortly. Make sure your cell phones are silenced. Remember, no video from anybody other than our friends at Hammond. We welcome the student athletes and head coach Greg McDermott from the Creighton Blue Jays. We'll start with a opening statement from Coach McDermott, then move to questions for him and our student athletes. If there are questions on Zoom, please raise your hand there and we will get to you after we've exhausted questions here in Fort Worth. Coach McDermott. It's incredible. Uh, the mental fortitude of this group uh, is like nothing I've ever experienced. Um, there's a toughness and togetherness about them that uh, allows what happened tonight to happen. Uh, we were dead in the water uh, the first half, down 14, 15, whatever it was, against a team that's really hard to come back on. Um, I have tremendous respect uh, for Coach Dutch and the job that he's done, uh, the job that Coach Fisher did before him. It's a, it's a program all of us would like to emulate um, because they're about success and they're about doing it the right way with toughness and discipline. And that makes this win even more gratifying because of who we beat. And we had to come back against a team that's very hard to come back against. And uh, our full, full court pressure late in regulation was really good. Uh, we stepped up and made our free throws for the most part. Um, you know, and then we, you know, we had a devastating loss uh, with Kalkbrenner going down. Uh, so this is a little bittersweet, I think, for all four of us at the table uh, because of what he's meant to this team this year and has meant to the run that we went on starting in early February uh, to get us here. Uh, he's been a key component of that. Uh, and, you know, it's unlikely uh, that we're going to have him on Saturday. So couldn't be more proud of this group. Um, it, it's, been a, it's been an unbelievable ride uh, that I've had the, the pleasure of being part of, uh, watching these guys grow and learn and, and do it together. And we've talked about process all year long um, because we were so young. And as I told them in the locker room, our, our first three games of the season, we were down nine to Pine Bluff at halftime. We were down two to Kennesaw State. We were down 12 to Southern Illinois Edwardsville. Uh, we found a way to win all those games, but from where we've come on November 10th to where we sit on St. Patrick's Day uh, is a transformation that um, I'm not sure I've ever been part of, and it, it has been one heck of a ride being part of it and an awful lot of fun. Coach, thank you. And questions for Coach McDermott, Mr. Alexander, Mr. Kaluma, or Mr. Hawkins? Start in the back 
on the right-hand side. Trey, you picked up your fourth foul with about 16 minutes left in the second half, didn't come back in until about seven minutes. What was kind of going through your head in that time that you spent on the bench, and how did you take what you were thinking of and apply it at the end of that game? Uh, so, oh my bad. I mean, basically, I was just trying to keep, keep everybody into the game. I know that Rachi stepped up. I know that we had a couple other guys step up, but mainly I just wanted to make sure that I was encouraging people on the bench, not trying to get my head down, make sure that everybody stayed into the game. and was making sure that everybody knew that we could win a game that was very winnable and go on a run that I felt like was bound to happen and throughout the game because I don't think we won very many runs until the end of the half. But just trying to keep myself engaged and my teammates engaged and just trying to stay in the game. Let's go on the left-hand side. Mac, what, do you, what can you say about what Trey showed you down the stretch today? I could say that I've seen it before. <laughs> You know, anybody that was in store or in Hartford, Connecticut in early February uh, saw it at the end of that game in a very similar circumstance uh, against a great defensive team that applies a lot of pressure. Um, and he just found ways to make plays. And, you know, it's especially hard tonight when your, your rhythm's upset so much by foul trouble. Uh, and, you know, we, we had hoped, uh, I was trying to get him to the 10 minute mark if it got out of hand, the eight minute mark, and we were able to get him to seven, and then he played the rest of the time. Um, but he's, uh, he's, he's been put into a very difficult role at, at midseason and what we're asking him to do and what teams are trying to do to uh, take him out of what we want to do. And he's handled it not like a freshman. He's handled it like a veteran. And uh, uh, he's, uh, he's a pretty incredible young man. He gets it and he understands the game. You can tell he's a coach's son. Uh, very high basketball IQ, and as you see, the, the, the expression doesn't ever change, and that's, uh, that's a sign of being mature beyond your years. Front on the right side. Hawk, was there a point in the second half where you decided that it wasn't going to happen today, this wasn't going to be your last game here at Creighton for the team? I feel like we decided that um, well before the game. Uh, we weren't ready to go home as a team. I'm not ready to be done playing yet. I still love it. I still love these guys. and. Um, you know, obviously, as a spectator, I'm sure you want that game to be a little bit you know, easier on your heart. Um, but those are the games that you remember the most. And I'm just very fortunate I get to play with this group. Very thankful that you know, our freshmen don't play like freshmen anymore. Uh, the, ma the maturity that this team shows for being such a young group is really cool to see. And I think that was on display the last six minutes of that game. Staying in the front. Uh, Greg, you said uh, Ryan's unlikely to play Saturday. Do you have any idea right now what the extent of the injury is? Uh, we won't know uh, until we do further testing, but it was a, it was a, it was a knee injury, um, so um, doesn't appear to look great. But uh, you know, we'll wait and see what uh, what the tests show. Okay. After Left Cal hand side, middle. After Cal goes down, uh, still you guys are still down a couple minutes ago. What do you say to the group to you know keep them motivated? Well, again, I, I was I was with Ryan on the floor, uh, so these guys were talking to my staff, and you know, just like at St. John's when uh, Ryan Emhart went down with a season-ending injury, by the time I got back to the huddle, uh, my staff and this group had themselves ready to go, and they were refocused, uh, and they did it again tonight. Uh, when I went over there, they knew exactly what they needed to do. Uh, they they understood the role, and Keyshawn understood the role that he needed to play uh, in Ryan's absence. Um, and, you know, we fought and clawed and grabbed and held and did everything we could and, and you know, found a way to come out of there with a win. Uh, so, you know, m once again, you know, my coaching staff's done an unbelievable job all year. It's, it's uh, you know, to have Al Huss and Ryan Miller and, and Jalen Courtney Williams uh, and the rest of my support staff, they've just done an unbelievable job preparing these guys starting back in late June. And in a situation like that, when the head coach is where I needed to be with a player that was hurt and was struggling, uh, they got the team refocused and ready to go. Back row on the right-hand side. Arthur, have you had a sec to kind of just process what just happened, the way you guys came back? And, you know, it's called survive in advance. I mean, has it kind of set in what you guys were just able to accomplish? I mean, yeah. I mean, I love my guys. I love this team. I love how we come together in, like, tough times and how we're able to work through a lot of things, a lot of adversity. And, like, we don't splinter off. Like. We're always connected, and you could see it on our faces. You could see it in our staff. You could see it in our eyes when we hoop. It's just on to the next play. 
We have a question from, we'll get back to the room in just a moment. We'll get to Matt DeMarinas on the Zoom. Matt, go ahead. Back, uh, Keyshawn, you know, he checks up Pulliam at 30 feet and takes him all the way to the rim, blocks that shot for Trey to go give you guys the lead, and then he comes up with the steal on the last, maybe basically last chance of the game for San Diego State. Just coming off the bench the way he did, cold and making those two defensive plays, what is what does it say about him? That moment? I mean, there's so much to say about Keyshawn, I don't really have time. Uh, you know, Ryan Kalkbrenner played 12 minutes a game last year and and uh, had a hard time with conditioning. And I think our hope was that he could be a guy that could get to 20 to 22, 23 minutes a game. Uh, and we recruited Keyshawn with the expectation that he would be playing 15 to 20 minutes a game, uh, not knowing that Ryan Kalkbrenner was going to make this monumental leap in his conditioning and in his game and you know play like a, you know, he's played like an All-American the last six or seven weeks. and. So I didn't, I didn't really, I didn't lie to him in the recruiting process, but what I thought was going to happen didn't happen. And it would be easy for Keyshawn to, to be bitter because of that. Uh, it would be easy for him to try to pull guys down in a negative way because what his expectation was uh, has not matched up to reality. And he's done exactly the opposite. Uh, he's embraced his role. He's helped these young guys grow as a mentor to them. Uh, and he's, he's, he's enjoyed every second of this ride. And, uh, you know, sometimes when you, uh, I've always believed that good things happen to good people. And Keyshawn's acted the right way all season long. And when you do that, I think nights like tonight just have a tendency to happen uh, where he makes a big defensive play uh, to ice the game, makes a big free throw to make it three points. Uh, and, uh, you know, obviously he's, he's going to play a huge role on Saturday and he's ready for it. In the back on the left side. Greg, two questions for you. Um, Mark Zegra, San Diego Union Tribune. First, were you purposely fouling uh, a rope and Bradley in overtime? It looked like you were. Uh, we, we, did, we did on the first foul. Uh, yes, we did not purposely. Uh, yeah, Alex O'Connell's not here, but no, we did not purposely foul him. That was not supposed to take place, especially his fifth foul. Uh, but we just decided to roll the dice uh, on the other one. Uh, uh, we had three guys out there with four fouls, and uh, we just played kind of the analytics game. And I'm, I'm not a huge analytic guy, but uh, I felt like uh, that one was, was worth the risk. And, and in regard to your foul trouble, uh, you left your guys in, didn't go to your bench. You know, is that just trust in them that they're not going to pick up a, a fifth? I mean, that was a lot of time. Uh, it's, part of it's we don't have any bench. <laughs> you know, like we've got. I don't know how many guys are hurt with a season-ending injury, I guess. Uh, there's a bunch of them. Uh, and, you know, some of those guys that, you know, Modestus Consularis is the only scholarship player that didn't play tonight. That's the only guy. Everybody else that we had available uh, scholarship-wise played. Uh, so we're down to, uh, we're down to seven uh, on, for Saturday night. So it, it, number one, I trust him. Uh, number two, I didn't have a whole lot of choice in the matter. One more in the room here, and then we'll go back to the Zoom. Trey, how do you, is that on? Trey, how do you, uh, when in, in the late moments of those games, keep yourself from letting the, the pressure overcome you? Uh, I think it has a lot to do with, uh, first off, Mac trusting in me and then also my teammates. Uh, I feel like my teammates have, throughout the season, trusted in me with the ball in my hands and that I make good decisions. And I mean, from then on, I just had to make the right decision. I feel like after that, it's just kind of what you do every day uh, after practice, before practice, whatever you want to say, the extra work that you put in, I feel like it just takes over in the late moments. And it's not really you thinking about it. It just happens. Okay. Go back to Matt on the Zoom for one more question. Yeah, for any of the players, uh, can you divulge anything that you guys were talking about while Matt was checking on? Um, call Benner, just in terms of what you guys said to get yourselves ready for this veteran. Trey, you can start on that. Okay. Uh, first off, I, we kind of got ourselves together. I feel like Hawk was the first one to initiate it, but uh, obviously, going having somebody go down like that is pretty hard on the team, uh, especially a guy that has been such a big presence on and off the court. Uh, you guys don't know Ryan Cockburn. He's a great teammate on and off the court. He's one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet one of the best teammates I've ever had in my career, my basketball career. 
But, I mean, we just brung ourselves together, and then we were just saying that we were able, we we're going to be able to win this game for him, and we we're going to play for him because we've had a lot of situations where we had to face adversity, and we were just telling ourselves, like, it's not new to us. We have another chance to face adversity and be able to make a big statement uh, throughout the whole, the whole bracket play and everything in, in, in March. It's just so fun to play with these guys and be able to, you know, play for the guy next to you. And, I mean, it was just been a blast this whole season and being able to play with these people. Arthur, anything you want to add to that? Uh, yeah. To build off what Trey said, Ryan Cockburn is a great teammate. I feel like, unfortunately, fortunately but unfortunately, we play some of our best basketball after someone goes down. But uh, we, stick to, we stuck together and we pulled it out. Okay. Ryan? Uh, the biggest thing was making sure we were all comfortable with what we were going to do. That's what I was trying to talk to these guys about. Just make sure we had everything, uh, like no miscommunications on defense because our ball screen coverage had to change a little bit. So we were making sure we were all matched up, just a little stuff like that instead of sitting there staring at him. Uh, you know, they both said it, but you cannot explain the, the, how good of a teammate Ryan Kalkbrenner is. Um, and so for that to happen, uh, you know, our hearts go out to him. But we had to make sure that we finished that game out for him. And so that was the biggest thing, was just getting everybody together, talking about what we were comfortable with offensively, and then making sure defensively we had everything buttoned up. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll see you back here tomorrow and then again for the round of 32. Oh, yeah. Go, uh, yeah do, we get to, do we get to take these tags, too? <laughs> Actually, I need, we need to keep them for uh, the next game. We welcome head coach Brian Dutcher and student athletes for San Diego State, Mr. Bradley and Mr. Pulliam. We'll start with an opening statement from Coach Dutcher, then move to questions for coach and the student athletes. Coach Dutcher. Just a really good college basketball game. Unfortunately, we ended up on the losing end of it. But that's March. It's the agony and the ecstasy of March. And uh, I thought we competed at a high level, put ourselves in a position to win, but to Creighton's credit, they closed the game and, and, and beat us. So I couldn't be more proud of my team, how they prepared, how they fought, and uh, it's just part of life. It's, uh, you're not gonna always get what you want. And, uh, but that doesn't mean you don't work for it, doesn't mean you don't want it. Sometimes you just don't get it. And we wanted to win, so did Creighton, and they made more plays than we did down the stretch to get the victory. So happy uh, for our effort, proud of my team, Proud of the seniors that played their last game at San Diego State. But congratulations to Creighton and good luck moving forward. Questions here in Fort Worth. We'll start on the, in the back on the left-hand side. Um, just for Trey and Matt, um, just can you take us through what happened in the last few minutes of, uh, of regulation there? Trey, you can start. Uh, I think they just turned up the press on us. Um, they just made plays when they needed to make plays. Um, yeah, they just made the plays that they needed to make, really. And took it into overtime and just kind of ran with it. Um, uh, 
All I can really rec remember is, you know, it was a tie game. I don't know how many seconds left. I was at the free throw line. I ended up missing the one-on-one, -on -one, and that sent us in overtime. So uh, just wishing I could have made those free throws. Next question for the student athletes or Coach Dutcher. Right hand side, about halfway back. Dutch, I think you guys were up nine with like 229 left in regulation. Was there any single moment in there that you thought really turned it and changed it down the stretch? You know, I don't know how many turnovers we had against the press. I think maybe one. Uh, you know, the one where three guys were on Lamont and uh, we tried to call a timeout. I asked, you know, I asked one of the officials, I said, what happened? There are three guys on there. I thought he was fouled. He said, I, I didn't see anything. So what can you do? You know, they, they got a steal on that. Uh, I think we threw the ball away one time, but uh, we made enough plays where we have to finish with a layup. We have to finish with a free throw. We have to finish plays. And we didn't finish enough of them. So uh, that's college basketball. I, I watch these games every day, watching all these teams go against press at the end. And as much as you can say, well, geez, they should be able to solve the press. Every game I watch, teams have trouble with the press down the stretch. So we had trouble, but still, we broke it. We got down the floor, but we didn't finish at the other end. Once we broke it, we didn't get points out of those possessions a lot of times. Whether it was drive, miss a layup, miss a putback, miss a free throw, we had opportunities, and we didn't close when we had those opportunities. And to their credit, they did. Just to get some clarification on this, Chad was so hot in the first half, I think he had 12 point, or, uh, 15 points in 12 minutes. He only played five minutes in the second half. Why was that? Just he's got to become better defensively, you know. And, and we've got a lot of good players on this team. We have a deep bench. And so uh, we had a six, seven, eight-point lead back and forth most of that half, you know, fairly comfortable. And we felt we could close the game with good defense and good offense. And obviously Chad had a magnificent stretch when he was in there. But obviously, we put the guys in the game we thought would win for us down the stretch. And we didn't make enough plays. Okay. More questions here in the room? Right hand side again. Coach, there's a lot of talk uh, today about the Mountain West st struggles. And it's been nine games in a row. Um, Obviously, you're worried about your own team, but is there anything that you can see to get, to get over the hump there? I just think that's the flavor of the week. Last year, it was the Big Ten. Right now, it's the Mountain West, and uh, tomorrow after the games, it might be someone else. So that's March Madness. So uh, I, I said this earlier in the week. You know, everyone was uh, upset about how the Big Ten played last year, and you turn around, they got nine teams in this year. So hopefully, our conference continues to play well, put teams in here, and uh, we get on a run. Uh, we're more than capable. Any more questions here? Go to the left-hand side. Uh, Matt, uh, after you missed the free throws at Boise State, you talked about wanting another opportunity. You had one tonight. Were you thinking about that? Um, was that in your mind? And, and, and you know, how do you sort of process all that? Um, yeah, most definitely. I was just, you know, I knew this was my second chance, you know, that me and Dutch, Coach Dutch had been talking about, you know, and, um, yeah, you know, yeah, Boise State didn't really go through my mind, but I knew this is my opportunity to close the game at the free throw line. And it, cause it doesn't come down to skill. It comes down to just belief, um, swagger, <clears throat> something that, I, you know, I've been lacking. And it's been a theme towards the end of the game for, you know, pretty much this whole season. So, it's just, you know, during this off season, definitely got to do some, you know, soul searching and, you know, figure out what it is with me mentally that's causing me to do that because it doesn't come down to skill. So, yeah. Question for Trey. You talked last year about, you know, how rough that, that loss against Syracuse was. You weren't really in the game. Obviously, this one is a different way. I mean, is this a worse way to lose? I know there's no great way to lose, but is this sting more than, than maybe that Syracuse game did? Uh, I would say probably, yeah, just because, I mean, we were up with two minutes, and I feel like we just gave in the game like we had it in our hands. But um, like Coach Dutch said, that's credit to them. They made plays down the stretch. Uh, they made plays when they needed to. We just came up a little short. Jeff's right there. Okay. 
Jimmy Watkins, Omaha World Herald. Um, Dutch, I, I know it, it hurt to see, but to see a freshman point guard play the way that Trey Alexander did at the end of that game, um, what, what would you make of his performance tonight? Played great down the stretch. He made important plays down the stretch, and I thought our defense was pretty good for most of the part. Didn't want to give him threes for Hawkins or, or uh, uh, why am I, O'Connell. Mm -hmm. O'Connell. Yeah. And they had one for the game. We want to pressure defense. We forced 20 turnovers. So I thought our defense was pretty good, but Trey broke us down at the end. He got in the paint. He made important plays in the, in the paint at the end of the game. And that's what it is. You know, you have to make plays down the stretch. And they made more than we did. And he made his fair share down the stretch to help them win the game. Any more questions? If not, guys, we'll let you go. Thank you for being here. Thanks, everyone.